nine hours of TED Talks, and you're still here. Fantastic. Um, I want to talk about building great things, and I think that's a unifying theme for, for all of us uh, through these last couple of days. Um, and, and especially today where we've heard so many different inputs, I think there's a human instinct that I can feel and touch and sense here in this room that we all want to build great things. Not only that, we want to empower other people to build great things. And if for some reason you're sitting here in the audience feeling disempowered, sad, alone, and dissatisfied, then remember, a single turd can shut down an entire swimming pool. <laughs> so. A couple of years ago, as a student at the University of Manchester in England, I found myself in a spot of trouble. And um, we were out at the bar, a couple of friends of mine and myself, having a couple of drinks. Uh, the bar in question is actually called Bar Bar, imaginatively enough. It's a very long, thin, trendy, open space, lots of mirrors, unisex toilets uh, down below, very important. And at one point in the evening, I had to use the facilities. So I head down the stairs, turn right, and uh, there's this guy blocking my way. And uh, I take a step right, and he takes a step right. I go left, he goes left. And I go right again, and guess what? He goes right. <laughs> I'm starting to get a bit frustrated about this because uh, he's stopping me from getting where I really need to go. And so, um, you know, a bit frustrated, I go, look, mate, what's your problem? He looks at me, I look at him. He looks at me, I look at him. And you know how you have those like flashes of realization that I see, so like aha moment. I had one of those. And it dawns on me that I'm looking at my own reflection in the mirror. <laughs> <sighs> and I turn around and there's this uh, girl sitting there, uh, washing her hands, just standing there washing her hands, just looking at this guy who's been fighting himself in the mirror for about 30, 40 seconds at this point. And I think there are a couple of lessons that you can take away from 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 my pain and I think the first one is that often we are probably the the barrier to our own success secondly and more of important uh, to, to my talk I think is there's a difference between theoretical knowledge and applied knowledge right and I think that's very clear today as well uh, what I'm seeing again and again today you know um, hearing sound bites uh, happiness leads to success not success to happiness, you know. And by the way, uh, Laurie, I, I know from personal experience that the key to happiness is lower expectations, or so I keep telling my wife all the time. <laughs> um, but also this idea of iterating, of exploring, of building great things. Uh, bu great things come through, through iterations, through explorations, through dedicated learning. And I think Winston said it, um, best, you know, it's, it's about trying and trying and trying again till you finally get it right, and that's how we build great things. And if there's one thing that I would like for you guys to take away from, from my talk tonight, it is that, you know, don't stop, go for it. So, you know, that can be scary at first. And I think this is what we need to kind of like help our kids do as well, right? Is set off down and try. And if you fall over and if you bruise yourself and if you die horribly in the process, then so be it. <laughs> because if you make it, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Here's the problem though. Right now, that's not what we're doing, right? And, and I think that particularly in education, but also in business and, 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 and in our lives in general, that's not quite what's happening. We're not exactly setting out down that hill. In fact, what we're seeing particularly in education is that we've kind of pointed this fire hose of information at our kids and we're cranking it up day by day, <laughs> week by week, month by month and year by year. And I don't think it has to be like that. I really don't. I think we're in a troubled situation when we're trying to feed our kids information, when we're trying to feed our employees information rather than develop their skills. Because we don't know what information they actually need, but we can know something about what skills they will need. And the trick here is to just say no. And that's the hard part, and that's the elephant in the room. Um, 
apart from all the other elephants in the room. <laughs> because the issue here isn't what we are saying yes to, it's what are we saying no to. What information is it that you want to take away from your kids' education in order to make space for them to figure things out for themselves? Right? That's actually a really, really tricky thing. Because right now we're trying to test for that information. You know, we crank up the fire hose and then we give them a test at the end of the semester to see how much they manage to retain. I think there's something else that it takes to build great things. I think uh, it needs to be easy to start building something. You know, low barriers for entry and action. And I think it needs to be beautiful. Beautiful is the, the ability to sense something and enjoy it, right? To see something and perceive it as being of pleasure. And I don't think if you ask your kid when you're letting them off at school, whether they're gonna have, to, like, a, did they have a beautiful day or not? What, what do you think their answer is gonna be? Yeah, right? Are you kidding? And, and, and so I think what we need to actually do is empowering ourselves and our kids to say no to stuff, to everything. If there's passion, then let's build on that passion. And it needs to be reliable. You know, you can't just stop. There needs to be, a, a system needs to be reliable. You need to have time to fail again and again and again. And a single day or a single week's project, depending on the scope, isn't necessarily going to hack it. It's going to take months and years to develop those skills. But it does need to be cost effective. And both the tools and the knowledge need to be cost effective. And I think that's the challenge that we're in here today, where we're seeing lots and lots of really, really great initiatives. Now let's take the next step. Let's make, let's make these things cost effective and implement them into a are various different educations. I know there are lots of educators here. I know there are quite a few of you who run businesses here. And, you know, we need to do that. I think there's part of this that, that I haven't mentioned yet that a lot of you are interested in, which is prototyping and 3D printing. And prototyping is really a very well-established system, you know, of quick iterations. And it goes by nami many names, you know, Scrum and, and, and Agile and so on. But being able to make physical models is a very powerful tool within this framework of trying and, and testing and, and producing things. And that's where 3D printing is one tool of many um, that can be very valuable. And you've seen some of you, the 3D printers outside. If you haven't yet, I'd encourage you to go out and have a look at them. Here's something we made, and, and I want to show you why it's important. This is a Trent 900 turbo jet engine part uh, from a Boeing uh, Rolls-Royce uh, jet engine. And if you were to try to produce this uh, traditional way or even through an online 3D vendor, you're looking at approximately a three-week lead time and $4,000, okay? So if you're a teacher trying to teach kids about jet engines or some mechanical component, that's not really viable, right? We made this in less than a week. We, it's 33 different prints on one of those printers out there. Uh, it took us 33 click-to-print presses, and it cost us 60 bucks, $60 for this, right? And, and we're trying to build a new printer that can, can do even bigger prints, and, and we'll be able to do so uh, wirelessly as well, and that's one of the things that are coming out in, in September now. The little robot guy there, by the way, his name is Mark II, and he's one of the many objects you can download from, from the wonderful thing that is the internet. There are many wonderful objects on the internet. There are also many less than wonderful objects on the internet. Um, but the great thing about 3D printers is that it doesn't really differentiate. If you think something is wonderful, then you're very free to download it. I want to show you some of the other things as well. This is a video that one of our users made. And it's essentially three weeks of him printing various different things on one of our Series 1 printers. For those of you who don't know how 3D printing works, it's basically a glorified hot glue gun. It's got 382 parts, but it's still a hot glue gun. So it basically melts some plastic filament and uh, puts them down in very thin layers, and you end up with fully functioning objects, like this one. I want to show you something exciting, though, that we've been working on. So you can see some of these parts out here. This is... Uh, this is a little sort of geometric lampshade model. Just shows you the sort of build volume that can build 
be built on one of the 3D printers. It's actually quite big. Um, what I'm very excited about, though, is this thing. And we built this just Friday. This is a metal cast. So you can take plastic objects and you can turn them into metal. Now, there are many materials you can print with a 3D printer, but if you try to print something in metal, you're looking at somewhere between a $50,000 to $100,000 3D printer. But guess what? This costs $6, right? So we are at point now where it's starting to be possible to build physical things at home, in schools, at our work, in a lot of different materials for very, very small amounts of money. And that opens up a whole new world of possibilities. I want to talk briefly about why I think it's important for us to do exactly that. I think many of you share my belief, which is that we have an obligation that we need to fulfill in terms of our future generations. I believe that we need to empower our children and our children's children to build great things. I believe that if we don't do that, we're going to have a world that is worse. And I believe that if we do do that, we will have a better world. To do that, we need to give them the space and the tools that they need in order to create their own dreams. We can't impose our dreams on our kids. They have to build their own dreams. And that requires space, and that requires tools and resources, and we can give them that. I believe that you guys have the power to do great things as well and to empower other people to build great things. And you've been here for nine hours, so I would like to ask you to simply raise your hand. Go on, raise your hand. Raise your hand, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Stretch it over to the right. Pat your neighbor on the shoulder and say, go build great things, because <laughs> we're done. All right, thank you so much, everyone.